So here's example three of our velocity time graph work. So we've got a motorist starting the car from rest. So there's that term from rest that we've talked about before. So that means our initial velocity is zero. It accelerates uniformly to a speed of V. We don't know what that is. In nine seconds, maintains that speed for 50 seconds, then applies the brakes and decelerates uniformly to rest. So it's gonna be that three part motion again, acceleration, constant velocity, deceleration. And it tells us here that his deceleration is numerically equal to three times his previous acceleration. We'll come back to the, why it says numerically equal, not just equal here in a second. So we're asked to sketch the velocity time graph, calculate the time during which the deceleration takes place. You see a little typo there. Deceleration takes place. And given that the total time, uh, sorry, total distance moved is 840, that's going to be the area under our graph, calculate the value of V, and finally calculate the initial acceleration. So we've got a few unknowns going on here, but let's get a graph drawn. Let's see what this looks like and start answering these questions. So as always, time on our horizontal axis, velocity on our vertical axis, and we're told initially then that it accelerates uniformly to a speed of v in nine seconds. So the first nine seconds we've accelerated up to a velocity v. So that's our first part of our motion. Then it says it maintains this speed, so velocity v, for 50 seconds. And again, this is not drawn to scale at all. I'm just putting that on my diagram there. And then decelerates, his deceleration is numerically equal to three times. Now it says numerically because it's deceleration, so it's not gonna be the same gradient of this. So my gradient here, my acceleration here, you know, A is equal to my gradient there, okay? But my gradient here is gonna be negative now. So this is not gonna be acceleration 3A, it's gonna be acceleration negative 3A because we've got deceleration there, I'm going back to zero here, going back to rest. So that's what's happening there. So that's gonna be steeper than this. Again, I'm not drawing it to scale, it should be three times as steep. But let's just get our diagram on there. So here, my acceleration here, my acceleration there is gonna be equal to negative 3a. And that's really important. Deceleration tells us a is negative, this numerically equal is saying, okay, it's three times A, but only numerically equal, the sign of it is negative. Okay, there's my velocity time graph then. And I don't know what this final time is, but I should be able to work that out by using the question, uh, the information given in the question. Okay, so part A is done. Part B then, calculate the time during which the deceleration takes place. Okay, so find the time during which the deceleration takes place. Now we've got a few unknowns here, so let's just have a little think about this. If I call this again, as we did before, if I call this the first part of the motion, second part of the motion, third part of the motion, just so you can see which bits I'm talking about. In the first part of the motion, the acceleration is equal to change in velocity over time, so change in y over change in x. So the change in velocity is v, and the change in time is nine. And I'm not asked for that, actually, am I? I'm asked for the time during which the deceleration takes place, but this is all connected because we're gonna have two unknowns. So in this third part of the motion, let's just see what we can find out there. Then in the third part of the motion, the acceleration is minus three A, and that's gonna be equal to the change in Y, so minus V over, and I'm just gonna call this T, this distance here, because that's what we're trying to find out, the time for this bit of motion here. So there's my t, which would mean that that would be 59 plus t at that point. But that x value there, that x distance, if you like, is t. Okay, so I'm just going to call that t. And that's the time that I'm looking to find in this one. And now what we've got, we've got simultaneous equations because I've got <clears throat> two equations, two unknowns. And in this one, I just want to find out what the, um, the time is here. So I'm going to have to do something around substituting in 
to find out this time. So here we go. Let's have a look. We've got a is equal to v over 9. So let's substitute that in. So minus 3 v over 9 is equal to minus v over t. And there's still two unknowns there, but these are going to cancel each other out now, aren't they, when I rearrange this? But let's sort it out. So minus 3v over 9 is equal to minus 3v over t. Playing around with this then, taking the t up, taking the 3v down, taking the 9 up, I should end up with t is 9 over 3, so t is 3 seconds there. So this is 3 seconds, so that's going to be 62 at that point there. Okay, so that's part B done. Let's keep going with this. Part C then says, I'll come back over here so you can see. Part C says, given that the total distance, so the total distance, don't forget, is area. So that's the area under my graph. The total distance is 840. Calculate the value of V. So let's get V involved in this. And again, you can do triangle, rectangle, triangle. I'm just going to do full trapezium. So a half. A is 62 plus B so is 50 times the height, which is my V. And now I can play around with this, sort this out, um, sort out your bracket, sort out your half, rearrange, I'll leave you to do that. You should end up with V being 15 metres per second. Okay. And the last part of this now should follow on quite straightforwardly. D says find the initial acceleration. So that was the initial acceleration in part one. And we had A is equal to V over 9. So I now know that V is 15. So my acceleration is 15 over 9, 5 over 3 metres per second squared. Or I could write that 1 and 2 thirds. Or I could write that 1.67 to 3 SF. Doesn't really matter. As long as we've shown our work in here, then how we give our final answer. If it doesn't um, say in the question, then we can choose to do that, maybe 3 SF um, as a decimal. So that's our third example. We're going to do one more example together and that'll be our graph work done for this lesson. So let me just grab the next example here. Sorry, here it is. So the next example, we've got two vehicles here. So I'm going to read through this and then we'll have a look at doing this together. I'm just going to check that that's in shot there. So we've got a car and a motorcycle travelling along a straight road. The car accelerates from rest, so it's starting from zero, to a constant speed of 28. The motorcycle accelerates to a constant speed of 25 in 10 seconds. After travelling for 90 seconds in total, the car hits traffic lights and decelerates. So this is going to be um, that three-part motion, accelerating, constant, decelerating, and then it decelerates to a constant speed, not back to rest, decelerates to a constant speed, and then carries on at that constant speed. The motorcycle is unaffected by the traffic and maintains his speed. So he, the motorcyclist, um, in 10 seconds gets up to 25 metres per second, and then he just carries on at that 25 for the rest of his journey. Okay. The motorcycle overtakes this car, after they've both travelled 3,700 metres. So at this point, I'm just going to move that up slightly. 3,700 metres. So there's a distance travelled. So when the area underneath these two graphs is equal, that's going to be really helpful when we're drawing this, when we're answering this question. When they've both travelled that far, that's when the motorcycle overtakes the car. So we're asked to draw speed time graph for both of these. So we'll have two separate graphs on the same axes and then use it to find our time when this happens, when one overtakes the other. So let's start this off and let's have a look, first of all, um, at getting our axes drawn. Okay, I'm going to try and use different colours for the different vehicles, hopefully you can see them. So a car accelerates from rest to a constant speed of 28. So I'm going to put my 28 on there. So the car accelerates from rest to a constant speed of 28. Doesn't tell us the time there, so I'm just going to call that T1, I think, because we're not told what that time is. So let me just call that T1. Um, 
So it accelerates to a constant speed here. I'm going to read on just for the rest of the car to get the car, the green graph on, and then we'll have a look at putting the red graph on for the motorcycle. So I'm just going to ignore that motorcycle for a second. After traveling for 90 seconds um, in total, then the traffic car, the car hit traffic light. So not 90 seconds plus this T1, but 90 seconds in total. So after we've gone from zero here to 90 seconds, it's been traveling at this constant rate, constant velocity, and then it hits traffic lights, decelerates then to a constant speed of 22. So again, I know that's not to scale, but let's just get that on so we can actually see what's happened here. I don't want it to be too small. So it decelerates then to 22. So that is 22. And that takes five seconds. So that point there must be 95 seconds on my time axis. Double them on my time axis. And then decelerates to a speed of 22 meters per second. So it's decelerated to 22 and then carries on at that speed. Okay, so that is my car. Let's have a look at the motorcycle then. The motorcycle accelerates from rest to a constant speed of 25. Okay, so the motorcycle accelerates 25, and that takes 10 seconds. And then, so this goes up to 25, it takes 10 seconds, and that just carries on then at 25 meters per second. It's not affected by the traffic lights. The traffic lights must have changed by then. So it just carries on through, and he maintains his speed, okay? So when I'm drawing this, what, what happens here? When the motorcycle overtakes the car, they've both traveled 3,700. So at some point here, where the two areas are gonna be the same, I want here this time two, where the motorcycle and the car are at the same distance traveled, and then the motorcycle zooms off, okay? So that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for that T2. Now the area under both of these must both be 3,700. So when I'm drawing my red graph on this, I need to make sure that it isn't just above this graph for the whole time. And it won't be, will it? If I go here and then go across, what I'm trying to do is to make sure the areas look about the same in my diagram. If, however, I put my time here somewhere, if I did this, then I'm not convinced that the amount of area underneath the graph and above the graphs would equal out. So let me put this on. I'm just gonna put 10 again. It's not to scale, but let's put 10 on. Let me get my red pen going. About here. And it's all only approximate, obviously. But if I do this, and then we'll just consider the areas, then this carries on at 25 for the rest of that journey till it overtakes. So there's my motorcycle. And getting the diagram right is a bit tricky, but what I'm looking for is the area here underneath the red graph and above the green to look like it's about the same as the area above the red graph and below the green because the two areas have got to be the same amount. So the bit that's above red but below green needs to look about the same. It's not to scale clearly, but it needs to look about the same as the bit, the bit that's above green but below red. So hopefully you can see that and the areas are going to more or less look about the same because they need to. Okay, so now let's answer this question. So we've drawn my graph. Now I'm gonna use it to find this time T2. So my total distance for both is equal to 3,700 for both graphs. So let's look at the motorcycle and then let's look at the car. And I'm gonna move this up now. We don't need to see the question anymore. The motorcycle then, let's have a look, the area under the graph for the motorcycle here. Okay, and I can either do trapezium or I could do triangle plus rectangle. It really doesn't matter. I'm gonna use trapezium because that's what I've been doing in those other questions. But if you want to use triangle and rectangle, that's absolutely fine. You'll get the same thing here. So trapezium, a half, a is T2 plus B is this length, so that's going to be T2 minus 10 times the height of the red trapezium there is 25. 
and that's going to be equal to 3,700, okay? So let's have a look at this. I'm gonna get 2t2 minus 10 inside my bracket. So over here, I'm just going to get rid of the 25 and the half, 3,700 divided by 25 divided by half. So that's gonna give me 296. So 2t is 306. So t, sorry, t2 that is. So t2, 306 divided by two, 153 seconds. So that's my time t2. Okay, so that's this value here. It wants us actually to find out um, the time when the motorcycle overtakes the car. So there we are, T2, that's the first bit of that question done. And the second bit of the question then is finding out how long the car was initially accelerating for. So that's this bit of the green graph, so it wants me to find T1. So now I can do area under my car, which is also 3,700, and know the value of T2 now. So I should be able to sort that out as well. I'm gonna maybe have to do this one in a few more different parts here. So I think in this one, let's split this up, the green, got a rectangle at the end there, got a trapezium. It's the other way up, that trapezium. So there's my trapezium there. Um, and then I've got a triangle, a rectangle, or I could do a trapezium here, doesn't really matter. Okay, so let's have a look at this. So for my car, let's do triangle. So triangle here, half times the base, which is T1, and T1, we don't know, that's what we're trying to find, times the height is 28, so there's that first triangle done. Then we've got this rectangle, so my rectangle, base times height, my base, now be careful, it's not 90, because 90 was all the way to there, so this distance here is gonna be 90 minus T1, okay, so that's that distance there, so 90 minus T1, times this height, which again is 28. I'm going to use this trapezium. You could do a rectangle and a triangle there as well. It doesn't matter as long as you're finding the whole area. So this trapezium, a half A is 28. B is 22. And then the perpendicular height between those is that 5. And then last of all, to move that across a little, last of all, this rectangle here, Okay, and this rectangle here, we know now that T2 is 153, so let me just put that on. So this length, 153 minus 95, so that's going to be 58 there. Okay, so this rectangle, 58, times this height is 22. And all of that is equal to my 3,700. So a little bit of messing around with this. Let's have a look. So we're going to get 14 T1, 90 times 28, 2520, minus 28 T1. Um, and then here, let me just sort that out. So 28, of course that's 50, times 5, half that. So that's going to be 125 there. And then 58 times 22 is 1276. So all of that is equal to 3,700. Playing around with this then, rearranging, collecting like terms, you should end up with, I'll let you do that, but you should end up with T1 equals 15.7857. So T1, 15.8 seconds to 3SF. So there's our fourth example of these done. I'm going to set you some questions on this and some homework as well on the mechanics we've done so far.